What's going on YouTube? I've been in business for a little bit, not as long as a lot of people on YouTube, I'm sure, but I've gotten some crazy, crazy customers, some crazy stories going through the years. I've got five main mistakes I've made in my entire business that really, I mean, they could they could sink me and yet I'm still here, but I, I gotta learn from my mistakes. So let's go over five main mistakes I've made in business. Handyman contracting, general contracting, where it, most of these most of these are relevant in most any business. Let's get into it. Number one. Number one is gonna be pricing. Now, starting up at when I was a young handyman, just starting out my business and everything, I get it. Like you kind of don't know, but you need to watch some videos. I'll link some videos in my description about certain aspects of this. You've got to know your pricing. There now, now there's uh, you know HomeWise, which is not great, but it's it's a start. You can look up online, see what other people charge for certain projects, but it's going to come with experience. I hate to say that because it's kind of a cop out. Pricing was my big mistake because there's jobs that I literally paid customers to do their job for them and then leave and lose money. Like literally, I'm way worse off doing that job than actually saying no and not doing that job at all. It is absolutely crazy looking back at some of the jobs now most of them they're not crazy especially when i started out as a handyman like you know going in making a little cubby putting in a, a tv and you know you look back and you charge them 250 bucks but you're there all day and then your materials are 200 dollars, and it's like all day for 50 dollars. like that's ridiculous plus you know drive time you know answering your phone it, it absolutely it was crazy now some jobs you'll take a loss and I get it too. It comes with it and it was experience. I was paying for experience and I just look at that. I write it off. I look at my, you know, look at my notes for it. I'm like, hey, that was a good learning experience. I'll, I will never make that mistake again. And you've got to be able to never make that mistake again or you won't be in business very much longer. Pricing is going to come with it. You're going to need to know your day rate as far as what you're going to do. So you need to find your day rate. Your day rate is basically three times. Here's a shortcut version. Three times your operating expense for your day is your day rate. So if it costs you, if you take all your expenses that are in your business, you know, if you're you're leasing an office, you're leasing your house, whatever it is, your rent, everything, you put that in, how, divided by how many days you're working that month, and then times it by three, that's how much you need to make in a day. That's basically your day rate. And now you can obviously multiply it by four, multiply it by two and a half, two. Wouldn't recommend going anything less than two, two and a half, because you're gonna need to make some profit. But that's your day rate. I didn't realize that until it was, you know, made a couple of mistakes, but then I was like, you know, light bulb, hey, I'm good to go. Now I have a day rate, no, no matter what it is, if it's going to take me all day, it has to be that amount of profit, that amount of labor included because I need to be able to make my uh, rate to pay my bills and actually have a profitable business. So pricing was definitely my main, I would say number one a issue. Now it's, these aren't in like, you know, worst to best scenario, but <laughs> pricing is definitely, and even now, like doing big, bigger jobs, you know, pricing, I've got to look at it and look and see because you can really mess your numbers up and also mess your business up if you don't charge enough and you're in a contract. Number two, number two, overbooking, overcommitting myself and my schedule. Absolutely 150%. When I was first starting out, I was, I was taking all the jobs I could, no matter where they were. Going here, going there, you know, my radius, I didn't even have a job radius for anything. It's like, hey, you want something done? I'll take care of it. I did have a job minimum. I set, you know, you learn really quick. Hey, my, my job minimum was $75 and it was $100 and it was $150. Now it's $850, $950 for a job minimum because of what I need to do. So I've obviously priced myself out of certain handyman projects because of that. Absolutely. It's, it's not worth it to me. But when I first started out and even today, like, even now, like I, I have a tendency to overbook and overcommit myself, which is a big issue. I, if standing in my position right now, I would tell myself it's better to have two or three days in a week where you are not doing anything. Absolutely don't have any work because you could be working on your website. You could be working on marketing. You could be working on keeping your tools up to date, you know, maintenance on everything, all your equipment. It is so much easier in my life to have a day or two or even hours. I measure my free time in minutes and hours. I don't even measure it. In, there's no way I have a free day. No way whatsoever I have a free day. There's always something to do with con continuous work that I have. It's not. It's free minutes and free hours if I, if I can eke it out. So overbooking myself and overscheduling myself was a real big issue. And even today, it's still some of it. I, I literally went from September 
to last like this February, like late February, I did not sign or even book any new work. Not one job was new. I was just trying to close out existing work. Now, granted, my projects are a little large, you know, well into four, five figure, six figure projects. I have not broken the single, you know, the, the seven figure project yet, but it's coming down the line. I can feel it. But these jobs are, they're big. They, they are absolutely large. But even the smaller work, even kind of high profit work, I kind of don't have time for it because I overbooked myself with certain things. If I can give myself any kind of advice going back, I would absolutely say don't overbook. Even though you can think you could fit another job in that, you know, during the week, just push it off to the next week. Put it on to the week after that. Just not put it on your plate because you're going to need time to you know, look at your numbers. Look at your jobs. Regroup. Do a post job interview with yourself if you can, and just be like, "Hey, what went right? Went wrong? What went wrong? How could I have been more efficient? How could I have charged more? Or, you know, maybe there's a change order. Or certain services you provided for free to a customer, but you maybe you shouldn't have. But absolutely, overbooking myself and just just my schedule alone is definitely one of the main issues I've had in business because it's hard. When people want to give you money, it's hard to say no. Or it's, you know, they want, hey, I can do it, but I need it done right now. It's really hard to say no. I would absolutely tell myself, absolutely say no because it's not worth it. Working that, you know, that sixth or seventh day during that week or even that late at night, you're robbing yourself and your family of time and it's not worth it. So, number two, overbooking my schedule, overbooking my time, not worth it. Number three. Number three, absolutely the one that's cost me the most money in my entire business career, my self-employed business career, is hiring the wrong subcontractors or hiring the wrong employees. Absolutely the most costly mistakes I've made in business have been redoing work, having subcontractors just, you know, not show up, not do the work correctly, not follow subcon you know, agreements and stuff like that is absolutely the most bane of my existence. Tens, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'd say over $100,000 in lost revenue, lost profit because of other subcontractors. And it starts and ends with me. There's no, I, yeah, I can blame them. Yeah, they're, they're, they are POSs out there for sure and bad subcontractors, bad contractors in general. But I'm the one who needed to vet them. I'm the one who hired them on, brought them on, and let them work under my, you know, P contracting umbrella. And it's my fault. It's absolutely, it, st it starts and ends with me. I take full responsibility for that in my business, but I'm trying to like, I purged probably seven subs from last year already. And we're probably going on another two, three or this year too. So I'm really niching down on everybody. It sucks because I have a lot of work to do, but I, there's just, I can't trust anybody. And the ones that perform, I got a reward with the extra work. And you'll find out that, you know, people like, if you're, if you're giving subcontractors a lot of work, or if you're a handyman subbing out other work to other handyman, they might get used to that and might you know they might come to expect it kind of thing. So I would say, you know, just cross your T's and dot your I's. Make sure you you need to micro it's not no such thing as micromanaging somebody if they're working under your business. Like it's your business. Hey, this is what you need to do. Now you can have clear scopes of work. I would highly recommend you guys have a subcontractor agreement, contractor contracts with your you know clients, of course subcontracting agreements slash contracts with your subcontractors is a must with a clear scope of work because it's going to bite you in the butt. It bit me in the butt. There's a couple jobs and it just, I don't know why I didn't have them sign a subcontractor agreement. I, maybe I'm just too busy, but it's coming to bite me in the butt now. Right. And last year it did the year before it did too. So I highly recommend you guys, if you need a subcontractor agreements, a template or a contract, you can reach out to me. I will leave a link in my description with my email address. I do sell these the ones that I use. Now they're not, you know, you definitely want to look it over and have your own lawyer look it over too, make sure it's legal in your area, but it's definitely a good start and it's going to cost you less than doing it by yourself or having a lawyer draw one up from scratch for sure. So I can't say it enough, you guys, vet the people you hire under your umbrella for your business or handyman services because they represent you and your clients are going to look to you in the end, not them to get the job done right if they didn't do it right or per what you have agreed upon. Number four, number four, absolutely the one of the banes of my existence is not pre-qualifying customers fast enough, soon enough, or as good and as I should be because customers, yes, you need to absolutely need customers in your business. Don't anybody tells you you don't, they're absolutely wrong. We're in business. We're a service oriented business. We need customers, but the right customers, absolutely 150%. The wrong customer will ruin your business. Absolutely. 
bad reviews, take you to the court. There's like right now I have a customer that's, you know, suing me basically because I wasn't going to do some, I wasn't going to pay for him to do his own work on his house on something that's completely unrelated to our contract and agreed upon scope of work. But I've got to deal with it, right? So that it is what it is. It slipped under the radar. 150% I needed to pre-qualify him. I should have, there's, you know, saying goes more red flags in the Chinese parade. It, they were all there. And I just, I don't know why I didn't see them. What happened? And it wasn't a great, it wasn't a huge, huge job. It was like a $35,000 job, which I know some of you might, that might be a huge job for you. But realistically, it was 130 square foot addition. We were tearing down, redoing and doing some extra stuff. So it wasn't, it wasn't crazy, but it just, it just, yes, absolutely need to pre-qualify your customers. Other customers, don't let the money blind you. Make sure, go through it, look at what they're doing, look, you know, ask them why they're hiring. You know, they, if they got 15 estimates, that's a red flag. You know, there's a lot of red flags. I'll link in the description if I can, different videos about this, you guys. Absolutely pre-qualify your customers, what they want, if they if they snitch on themselves and say, you know, we're really picky. I have OCD, blah, blah, blah. Like just know in the back, like, Hey, that's a red flag. You're probably going to want to charge a little extra because they might be a little bit more to this customer than you just getting in, getting done with the job site, getting paid and getting out. Be patient with your vetting process. Absolutely. Look at everything. Look at your notes. Ask yourself, do you want to do this job? And then obviously bid work based on worst case scenario. Hands down, worst case scenario. Don't think like, oh, it could be this easy, blah, blah, blah. Worst case scenario. What if I hit this water pipe and we get flood something? What if this happens? Look at every what if you know scenario and worst case scenario. Don't think about the best stuff going in, getting the job done, thinking it's going to take three weeks and it only takes you one. It's probably going to, if you think it's going to take you three weeks, it's probably going to take you six. Pre-qualify your customers, guys. I know I'm kind of rambling on this one, but make sure you pre-qualify your customers. Number five. Number five, setting a schedule and sticking to it. Really big on this one. It's I'm actually not very good at it, period. Like I'll tell you guys this right now. I still kind of struggle with this. You got to look at all the work you've got, set a schedule, let customers know, over communicate, always text them, call them, let them know when you're going to be there, set a schedule and absolutely follow it. And it's okay to tell that person who needs an estimate that you can't be there for until next week, or you can do it via remote, like if you with pictures and everything. Make time for estimates. I, I get it, time kills deals, but make sure those customers that's already paid you, you already have a deposit, you're already on the schedule, they get taken care of first. Set your schedule and stick to it. Know what you're gonna do and obviously let everyone know what your schedule is because customers like to know and it's a lot of time consuming when customers have to text you, they don't know and they do tend to become entitled. I'll tell you that right now because they become they they too, they tend to become entitled to your time because they're the, you know you have a contract with them they're your contractor so they expect you there all the time every day now depending on what you communicated with them it might that might be the expectation like you might be there all day every day until it's done but know that there's things going on what if like, your your wife gets sick your girlfriend you know something happens your daughter has something in the flu like you need to have certain precautions set in your contract and also communication with your customer like hey can't make it today guess why life happens right so over communicate and obviously set a schedule you should already know, like you can go into your, whatever CRM you're using, you can go into your Google calendars and you can see exactly what you're going to be doing. That way you can know and you can actually let customers know because over communication is key when customer service, especially in the contracting and handyman field, because everybody's got a schedule and they just want to be able to fit everything in and you need to not waste your time because it really sucks going from one spot to another. Like just for instance, last week I knew I had to pick something up at a Menards and Menards is not crazy close. It's like about 30 minute drive for me. But guess what? I went to the Menards to pick something up because I ordered it wrong Menards. So if I actually set my schedule and I looked and see exactly, hey, and then even the receipt said, hey, wrong, you know, the Menards that I was going to was the wrong one. So it was just an oversight on my end. Setting a schedule will definitely eliminate stuff like that. And that wasted probably an hour and a half of my day just driving the wrong spot. And then the other Menards it was at was an hour, almost eh, 52 minutes or so in the opposite direction going the other way. And it just, oh, it just ugh, kills me for that kind of stuff. And there's nobody to blame but myself. And because I didn't set my schedule, I didn't know ahead of time. So I, there's a saying in the Marine Corps, like the seven Ps, which is proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. And that means you need to plan ahead and it's, setting your schedule is the best way to do it. So that's all I got for you guys. That's the top five mistakes I've made 
Hopefully I didn't ramble on too long. I'll see if I can edit this stuff down a little bit. If you guys got any more mistakes that you've made in your business, let, them know, let me know in the comment section below. Those are the main ones. Lots of room for improvement. I still make mistakes, but hopefully I, I don't make the crazy mistakes that I used to that cost me all this money and time. And I just want to grow my business and be way, way, way more efficient. So like and subscribe, you guys. I'll see you in the next video. I appreciate everything.